It's a bit grim for a morning's chubbing. In fact, it's been raining all night long and there's some very strong winds. At least for the moment it's all stopped, but looking at those clouds up there in the west, I feel that uh, we're going to get some more later on. Oh, this is an awkward gate to open and shut. God, yeah, man, must have been a lot of rain. It's very squelchy here. The river doesn't look too bad. It's uh, probably low, if anything. In fact, it's been very, very low just lately. Most peculiar. Last time I fished it, a couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of leaves. We really haven't had a, a tremendous flood yet, although we've had lots of rain. Morning. <laughs> You're not getting any of my bread today. Well, I don't know. The river looks a bit painfully low from here. It's, I can see the bottom, too. Well, I thought after all that rain, the river was going to be a lot higher and more coloured than this. It's painfully clear. And it's so low, I think it's probably got something to do with a pumping station that the AWA are installing further downstream. That's what all that racket's about. It's not going to be easy here today. Actually, at this spot last week, I bumped into old Len Baker, who was looking at some swans in this area, and it was a very interesting conversation we had. I think you're going to enjoy seeing it. Morning, Len. Hello, young John. <laughs> young? Wish I was. What are you doing out this morning? Looking for swans? No, just checking that little fellow over, John. His father was crippled here last week with tackle. Now that little chap doesn't look well at all. Yeah. It's got a funny sort of um, slant to its neck. I'm afraid he's got lead. I didn't realise it affects them that young, young in age, but now, now you, you look at it at this angle, it's definitely got something wrong with its neck. He's just it? a very sick little swan. Yeah. But young, it affects them from the ovaries. You know, if the mother's got lead, yeah. the lead actually travels through the ovaries really? into the yolk of the egg, so the baby's born with a burden. He could die of lead without one single piece of fisherman's weight in him. Yeah. Simply because his threshold of lead is way, way high. His yeah. kidney's already damaged, you know. Yeah. Just come and go around and have a look at it. Come and have a look at the little fella, John. Mm. He hasn't even grown like he's... You know, he should be much, much bigger than that by this time of the year. Yeah, so I can see what you mean yeah. about that... ..that uh, signet from here. He's a little chap, John. Yeah, squelchy here, watch it. Oh. Yeah, he's very Look, His neck, neck looks that much squatter, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not, not upright, is it? Yeah. It's folded down that, that much more. Well, from his tummy, John, from halfway along his body, right up until a third of the way up his neck, that's still vegetation in there that he can't digest. He it? can't go through? No, cos his little gizzard stopped solid now. Does, does it actually go... Th the food actually go through the gizzard? Oh, yeah, the it gizzard... Goes through it all itself. it is, John, is a bull mill. It's a grinding machine, mm. mate. There's nothing more complex than that. It's a muscle with a cavity inside, mm. and in that cavity is grit. Yep. And the grit grinds the vegetation and food stuff up, then passes that through to the intestines. It's your mouth, really, mate. That's all it is. Yeah. And you can't put a mouth in a swan's beak because it'd fly nose down. So it's in his tummy. That really is what it is. Now, the media, Len, has always suggested that you dislike anglers. I know that not to be true, but what do you say? Um, shall I take my foot off your instep first? Uh, yeah, right now, if you don't mind. <laughs> Dislike anglers. Well, a child, isn't it? Pathetic. I don't like stuffed marrow either. I'm not too keen on Coronation Street, you know. It just doesn't enter in it. But the media love confrontation, right? Mm. It sells things. Len Baker slams the Duke of Edinburgh. Len Baker hates John Wilson and his fishermen. What a load of old cobblers. Well, there's not room for this, mate. There's not room for this dislike or hate. I'm not interested. No, I don't I... like fishing. I don't do it as a hobby. I think you're around a twist. But you probably wouldn't like to rescue swans every day, you know. We're all a bit funny, mate. That's right. I mean, I, I found out you got very much in common with anglers several years ago, if you remember, when we met down downstream and I had a bit mm. of a balmy one of, one of your swan employees on the other side of the river and you invited me across and ironically enough you had on the other side of the river a tub of the first lead free weights that's you? right yeah and it was ironic that I yeah, couldn't get them time as time. an angling writer and you had them but as the, that's right in fact I've got yeah. some of the, the the latest ones with me now I want your see what you think of them this is a they're doing some good jobs they now, are they're super they're this is the new metric one have a look at that one that's made out they of they really are clever people um, these people 
and the, in here is a mixture of the Sandvik safe weights and the Thamesley Super Shot. Have you which, used which this one, John? Yeah. This new one? Yeah, I've used that. I use a I mixture of all of them. I know you use all of those. Them. Yeah, I like to use a mixture of all of them because it's some incredible, are harder isn't it? and some are oh, I couldn't have been done all that time ago. Well, James, that's true. You know? I know. At least it's a start, mate. I mean, yeah. you know, let's let's be a little Good, positive. I'm... It's a start. Yeah. People are interested now. Of course they right. are. In, in fact, with bombs, if you have a look at this, this Good is the grief. latest in what bombs. Are they? Well, they're made from brass, and you've got a little screw separate swivel top, like that. Oh, that's brilliant. And each that's of them... That's lovely. Can I see it? Yep. Each of them screws into the same swivel top. What so a you clever can, little thing, John. You can instantly change from one size to another. It's better than how it used to be, isn't what it? What a clever little... I mean, all those people telling me anglers can't use joined up right and yet they can make something like <laughs> <laughs> It's lovely, mate. I'm, de I'm delighted, seriously. And what can be done, Len, to, uh, from the shooting point of view, what can be done? Our anglers are trying to put their house in order by all these lead-free, non-toxic alternatives. What oh, can be done in the shooting situation? At this very moment that we're going out, and uh, I don't know when this will go on the television screens or whatever, but while we're talking, the British Association for Shooting and Conservation are working with the NCC mm. on the death of Hooper swans through lead poisoning. Uh, I just wish they wouldn't couple those two things, shooting and conservation. You know, it niggles mm. me a bit, mm. but that's a word. That's why I'm not a conservationist. I say mm. swans and birds. But they're working on it, but it's going to take an awful long time. Yeah. Can you imagine if we could weigh the amount of lead used, for example, on a clay pigeon shoot of a Saturday afternoon, John? I think anglers lose a little less than that over a season, mate. Well, it's nice to know that you see it in an all-round situation, and I'm sure a lot of anglers will be that much happier for knowing that because it's never come through until now. You can't compromise with the truth, mate. Shall we go and have a look down the river? Come have on. a cup of tea. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I'll tell you what, Len, there's something I've always been meaning to ask you, and that is, can a swan really break a man's arm? Yeah, usually when they're driving a full transit or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be very careful here today with this clarity. I think it's a case of hit and run. I've got plenty of bread flake and some worms, and I'll, I think what I'll do is just move from swim to swim, probably taking one or two fish in each or, or none. I'm not going to give it very long in each, that's for certain. This wind's springing up a bit as well. Yes! <laughs> We're in. Oh. Oh. That took right down the other end of the swim then. Ooh. I thought that's where they might be lying. Got always not off pulling in this flow. The clutch a bit too loose there, really. Oh no, it's trying to get under that far bank there. Ah, oh, god, just turned it in time. Feels like a good fish. The clutch a little bit slack there. You've got to be a bit careful playing a strong fish in fast water on the clutch in case it makes a, a sudden lunge downstream. This is where sometimes they make a, a swimmer's roll and uh, a last minute dive. Come on. Oh, that's only a, only a little fish. I thought that was much bigger than that, the way that was going. Oh, that noise over there, that's driving me absolutely crackers. Oh, it's a nice chunky little fish. Lovely one. Typical of a Wensum winter chub. Oh, it's got a most peculiar thing on its tail there. It's like an appendage to its tail. Haven't seen that before. Most peculiar. Beautiful colours, these Wensum chub. Super fish. Look at that, like a new penny. Absolutely beautiful. Mixtures of silvers and bronze and pinks and greys. Lovely. I like bread from a really new loaf, and I push the hook into it like that, put my thumb over the point whilst I squeeze it on. And when that swells in the water, the hook point easily goes in. That's better. There we are, I've got the bait right down at the end of the swim, where I had the last bite. Goodness me, that's an awful racket coming from that pumping station over there. I don't know what they're doing. It's not exactly a quiet day by the waterside at the moment. I don't know, I think I had a little tiny twitch then. 
Yes! There we are. Oh. Do you know, I've had a couple of those I haven't even bothered to hit. Thinking that they might be dace and not chub, but they are biting very, very delicately today. This one's a good fish, it's keeping very low down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's a good one. Come on. <laughs> oh. Right. Come on. Oh, no, he's got him. <laughs> got stuck on that bed of leaves here, right in front of me. There's an almost great big bed of leaves where they. River's been in flood and they've all collected on the inside of the bend. That's a nice fish. About the usual sort of stamp of these went some chub, about two and a half to three. There we are. Lovely looking fresh fish, that. Well, this swim's gone dead now that I've had a couple. And so I'm going to walk a long way downstream to one of my favourite bends. And anyway, that noise is driving me absolutely crackers. I can't stick that all day long. You so I'm going to walk away from it. And that's the nice thing about winter chubbing. You can wander. In fact, I often catch some very big fish by doing just that. Well, here we are. We're much further downstream now at a nice double S bend. We've got well away from that horrible racket, but the uh, trouble is here is we've Got a lot more wind. That would be the easiest bend to fish, but I always fancy this very shallow one where the wind's ripping through, so I'm going to give this a go. It'll be very quiet here because the water's so very clear. I'll creep down behind this thick bed of reed grass. Right. This is a better spot I can. Put my rod rest and store down here. I think I'll start by putting in a little mash bread. It's quite fast here as it comes whisking round this corner. There's quite a few leaves coming down as well. Put a little bit into the middle of the river. This is old bread, really well soaked and then mashed up and it sends off lots of little particles downstream. I'm sure I had a little touch on that cast. I should have hit that, but at the time I thought it was blanket weed. No, let's whack it in anyway. I think I'm going to try lots of different spots around the swim until I pick them up. I haven't really and any indication where they're lying at the moment. Sometimes they're lying right underneath my own bank, very close in, particularly when the river's in flood. And sometimes they're right over on the far bank, just off that point now. I think I'm going to give it a go over there now. That's better. Gone a little bit too far. We'll leave that anyway. I'm sticking with the flake. I haven't bothered to try worms yet. If I go on to trotting, I'll probably give maggots a go. But, so I haven't any, had any indication at all of any numbers of bites. With the water nicely rippled like this, I shouldn't think it would worry them moving up onto this bend. Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh that was a clanger. <laughs> oh, that was that long cast. I put that right at the end of the swim there. Oh, this wind. I have to be careful with this because there's so much pressure on the, the line from the wind that it's going to knock it off the hook here and I'm down to a three pound hook link to try and get a few more bites. Oh, it's trying to get underneath my own bank there. Come on! Oh, that is a good fish. Cool. Come on, Wilson, careful. Easy does it. This is where I always worry about them. Getting off of that last minute. Oh, that's a super fish. Well over four pounds. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. look at the size of that. 
<laughs> what a whopping great chub. That's got to be four and a half, getting on for five pounds. Look at that one. Oh, that's fabulous. That's the biggest chub I've caught in this room for a long time. I think I'll have to unhook him with the forceps. Right. Never, ever put your finger down a chub's throat because down there they've got the most incredible set of powerful frangial teeth. I've got a set here. Look, that's what's at the back of their throat in there. And when they munch their food, if your finger's down there, you can guess what's going to happen. Right. Incredible powerful throat teeth. Let's put him back straight away. Well, I just put him on the scales and he went four pounds, 11 ounces. Lovely fish. Let's put him back. Away you go. I think what I'm going to do is move downstream a bit and uh, see if I can find some trees on the other bank to trot to. Two or three hundred yards downstream, there's a, a very nice swim where I usually get a few fish, so I think I'm going to move down there. Here I am. I'm in a... A nice trotting swim. It's so blustery, though, it's not easy to see this float in this face. And I've started off with a waggler here. There's really nothing else I can do. It's very, very gusting as well. But the chub are there. They haven't climbed out on the bank, so we'll see what we can do. And to top it all, the sun's actually poking its head through every now and again, right into the float. So um, it's not going to be easy seeing these bites, if we get any. Straighten up. There we go. I did have ten minutes quiver tipping first without uh, without the touch. See what the float brings. Wind's difficult. It really is. Yes! This feels like a good one. Oh, it's really putting some bend in the rod. It's kiting upstream now. This is where I worry about the little hook coming out when it comes opposite me. Invariably does. I don't know why. It's probably the angle the hook went in. At. That's a good. Oh, that is a good fish. Yes. <laughs> the first thing you see about a chub is its enormous great mouth and those big old rubber lips coming to you. Come on. There we are. Come on. There he is. Got him. Good. Oh, it's much nicer catching them trotting, even if this wind is proving a bit. Of bit difficult. I always think I'd sooner have a chub trotting than four on the on the ledger. It's a nice plump fish. That three, three and a half. Lovely plump when some chub. Where's the hook? <laughs> oh dear me. Hardly in at all. I nearly lost that one. Right, as this water's so clear here, I think what I'll do, I'll put these in the net. I don't really like putting them back in the water when uh, when the river's so clear, so I think I'll put the keep net up here, out of the way. I have to be very careful, cos this, this uh, bank's so squelchy here. Wow. Well, right. Let's dampen the net, first of all. That's a nice fish, that one. Nice and chunky. They fight so hard on light tackle. That's what I like about them. Right, let's put him down there a second. Stay still. No, that's no good. Let's have that out again. The wind's blowing the net back at me here. That's better. Right, in you go. Lay the net flat and... Uh, he'll be all right there, in case we catch some others. It's 
going down nicely now. The wind's gone a bit quiet on me there. This is the sort of run through where you get a bite. Yes, and <laughs> it's there. Oh, oh, oh. Woo -hoo -hoo. Come on. Oh, it's trying to get under those trees. No, we're OK. Oh, <laughs> it's not ready yet, though. Come on, baby. Come on. Dump the Johnny. No, he's still not having it. Strong fish, this one. It's not enormous. It's not as big as that four-pounder, but it's, uh, it's fighting really well. Come on. When they got their mouth open, they're ready. Oh. That one went well. It's a nice thing about using light tackle when you can in the winter for chub. They fight so well. <laughs> Let's put him in the net. Put two yellow maggots on this time. I like these yellow maggots. They're dyed with a non carcinogenous dye, and uh, I think they're excellent for clear water. It's a mute point, really, whether they really make any difference to bites, but uh, I think if you think it does, then that's the half the problem. Gives you that little edge of confidence. Whacking coop through quite fast, actually. I uh, wonder if they've opened one of the sluice gates further upstream and down. Yes! Great. Let's hope the hook doesn't pull there. This water's so fast and it's still going downstream now. God, they don't half pull these winter chub. They really do. Oh, that's be it's a beautiful fight, this. I just can't hurry it. It's... Oh, the wind, when it blows, comes to me and puts so much torque on that rod tip, it's liable to rip the hook out, so I've got to go just that little bit more steady than what I normally would, really. It's coming upstream towards me now. That's strange, that, when they're really going well there, whenever I can just get the float going through on the right line, bang, the float goes. But when it's dragging because the wind's pulling the float over, they just don't want to know. Come on, this is a good fish as well. Feels very heavy. You have to be careful with this, Wilson. That is a very good fish. Looks like a four-plusser. Come on, my baby. Yeah, look at that mouth. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, on trotting gear, that's fabulous. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is super. Lovely thick fish. Lovely, these winsome chub. Well, that's it. I think I've had enough of this. The wind's getting worse. It's just started to rain. The light's going. And I think it's time to call it a day. And it hasn't been too bad at all, really, considering the conditions. I didn't expect to catch so many fish from this swim. I was really going to have a bit of a wandering day. Let's have a look in the keep. Let's see how many we've got. Ooh. I like having a last look at them all at the end of the day. Oh, certainly didn't expect to catch this many out of this last swim. There we are, six of the best. That's a good one, possibly three and a half, four. All the rest, probably two and a half to three. I did, didn't expect to get six out of that swim this afternoon in this weather. Right, let's put them back. Oh, that's the good one. Oh, they're in super condition, these chaps. Oh, that one shut off. <laughs> oh, this water's freezing. No, oh, that's a good one as well. Perhaps I was underestimating some of these. They're not bad fish. Perhaps get a little bit of flippant at times on the Wenton because it's such good chubbing. There we are. Where you go. Last one. I think I've kept the smallest one for last. There you go. Uh, did you enjoy that? Fantastic. So did I. <laughs>
goodness me, this lane's bumpy. But it's a lovely drive here, through the trees. They must have been hundreds of years old, these oaks, and there's a few ashes and beech. Here we are. It's a lovely sight when you see the lake at the end of this lane. Super place. Well, that's a bit overcast at the moment. There's a lot of flies around the windscreen. I hope we're not going to get a storm later. Huh? Well, it's a bit overcast, but, um, mate, it looks lovely. Looks absolutely super. Oh. Let's get the gear out.